I, I think I've always gravitated towards uh, unknown situations, and then I've really enjoyed having to figure out, like, where do I go from here? You, you try things that you think you can't do, and then you figure it out. And even if you don't get where you thought you would get, just figuring out partway or figuring out a different route has its own reward. My name is Palav Kasuri, and I am a biophysicist. I grew up in Sweden. When you grow up in Sweden, it's, uh, you spend a lot of time outdoors. Uh, you make your own toys in nature and uh, uh, kind of create your own games. So I think from, from an early age, I, I, uh, I built a lot of things. From, from, you know, I learned to carve wood and um, build things with pine cones and sticks and... I, I think I went to, through two phases. When I was little, like very little, like pre, before school, I had way too much energy and I was, must have been terrible to my parents. I climbed everywhere and I talked to everyone and I was just like always excited about everything. And then um, in my teenage years, I became more introverted and I started reading a lot. I have this distinct memory, like on the bookshelf at home, we had a, an encyclopedia. I would just pick one and <laughs> just like sit and read it for hours. I, looking back, I, I, don't, I don't know what's, what's so fun about that, but <laughs> I found it fascinating at the time. So I was into this like engineering type stuff too. So even in science fiction, it was like, how did they build the spaceships? Or like, how could they travel faster than light? You know, like, how does that, how does that even work? The reason why I joined my PhD lab was that I was, again, I was like looking at different options, I was talking to people, and I set up a meeting with a bunch of different professors. And so one of the professors was uh, this uh, the senior professor, Julio Fernandez. Um, and I didn't know much about his research at the time. I knew he was like intersectional, you know, physics versus biology, trying to combine those two fields. It sounded exciting. I spent, I think, three or four hours in his office, like talking about everything from like science to philosophy to life to, you know. And I, I remember walking away, being like, "Okay, this is where I'm gonna, <laughs> this is where I'm gonna do my PhD." And that that was exactly what happened when I first came to Salk. The entire experience was just, uh, it, it was just incredible. I I remember. Even, even like, you know, it's very stressful giving your job talk. You, you stand in front of all of these famous professors and you talk about your work. And I was kind of prepared to like have to defend myself and be like, oh yeah, no, no, I did these control experiments or I, I'm sure of this because I, I, I did all the extra steps, you know. And instead what happened was, you know, they were definitely critical, but, but they were all sort of trying to build on what I was saying. You know, everyone that I talked to was like, wow, you know, Imagine if you combine your technology with this, this experimental system that we set up, or imagine doing this experiment but in plants, you know? And I, was, <laughs> I remember coming away from every meeting with someone being like, oh my god, I want to do this thing. Like, <laughs> it's another experiment, another project. And I, I just realized that there will never be any shortage of inspiration or projects here at Salt. So in my lab, we're trying to inspire other scientists and engineers to think about DNA as a, as a building material, as a, as a tool to design devices and machines. Nowadays, we can sort of encourage the DNA to fold into different shapes. So not just a double helix, but to be like Y-shaped junctions or, or sheets. Um, so it's still, those sheets are still double helices, but they're sort of cross-stitched in parallel. So you can make like a carpet, or you can fold those sheets into three-dimensional shapes and make components for nano-sized machines and we are using that technology to build sensors and devices on the nanoscale and it's a method called DNA origami. What I see is the potential for a new kind of engineering that allows us to build devices, sensors, diagnostic tests. If you can build things on the molecular scale up, you could make computers that are more efficient. You could potentially make turbines or power generators that are more adaptable, cheaper, easier to scale and even though I don't know currently what the sort of blockbuster uh, breakthrough will be in terms of applications, this technology definitely has the potential to change the way we do science and interact with the world.